February 27th, 2018. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. And this is actually kind of a special Harp Tuesday because yesterday I launched my Patreon site, which is a way that you can become my patron and help support what I do with Harp Tuesday. So this is actually the first episode that is in part supported by my patrons. So thank you to them, and I encourage you to check that out. Today what I'm going to be talking about is the Butterfly, which is a, a traditional Irish slip jig. Great fun, lovely piece, and I've been working on it with several different students, and I, I just felt there was some, some things in here that I thought would make good material to talk about. So let me try just playing it through for you. It consists of three verses. Each verse gets played twice, and then you just go back to the beginning and, and keep playing. So, um, yeah, let me play... I'm gonna play... so... This, uh, you can find the music for The Butterfly on the session.org, for example, or if you'd like to get um, this version with my fingerings on it, uh, you should be seeing a link somewhere to download that, to, to get that. And um, if you look at that version, I, I have some chord markings, which I just got from one of the versions on the session.org. But are those the chord markings you actually want to use? Maybe, maybe not. For the moment, I'm going to play it through just so you can hear the tune. And I'm, I think I'm just going to play a, a drone E in the left hand, so just a, an E octave at the beginning of each bar. So a lot of fun to play. Great, great piece. And one of the first things I'm going to talk about is this idea of, of playing through a, across a bar line. So I think sometimes what can happen is we can get to the end of a bar and think, ah, we're done. And especially say, say you're doing this left hand drone or something, you're doing something on, on the downbeat of each bar. So what's next? And you don't end up connecting across the bar line because sometimes that bar line can act kind of as a, as a period, sentence is over. But actually, what we want to be thinking about is the phrase so that oh, we still have a, we have to get fairly quickly from that D to the B. So really being aware of the bar line just delineates that bar that, that in this case, nine eighth notes have passed, but that in terms of the, how we're connecting, Right? We want to keep connecting because we, we just had an eighth note, the next note has to come quickly, so that we want to connect all the way up to that. And, and that's just something I think, and especially say when we get to the end of the line, so all of these verses, when we get to the end of the line, we're connecting either back or whether we're going on, or we're always connecting. And yet, again, visually, we can reach the end of the line and think, oh, it's over. Okay, what next? And, and come off. So this is a great opportunity to really think about connecting across bar lines, connecting within a phrase. It's also a great opportunity to think about coming off. So I'm suggesting that at the beginning, this little... that we come off on those slightly longer notes. To me, I'm always aware of, is there an opportunity to come off? Do a little bit of a raise, a little bit of a wrist movement, a chance to to relax, right, and, and, and get off the string and kind of bounce. And in this case, I feel it, it kind of, in that, those those bars, it kind of reinforces the, this rhythm. So just being aware of, of those. This is also a, an interesting piece just to figure out a fingering that works for you and at the speed that you want to play it, because sometimes we might end up writing in a fingering and it works when we're playing slowly, but then as we get faster and faster, we maybe come to the realization that this fingering just doesn't work. We can't play it at the speed we need to. So again, always looking at what are the difficult bits and can we make the fingering around that be as easy as possible? And then when there's something longer, that's when we might do something more complicated, for example. So for example, in general, 
in general, it makes more sense if we're crossing over under to time it so that the last note before we cross under is a slightly longer note, or the last note before we cross over is a slightly longer note and then we cross over. So in general, better to go uh, rather than rather to have, rather than have that say crossover in the middle of two faster notes just something to be aware of as you're approaching the fingering in a piece like this um, then I wanted to look just a little bit at for example the end of the first line whether we're going back to repeat or we're going on we're connecting up to this thumb and that then actually becomes a really good reminder to not, not let the hand turn and trail down because look at where my thumb is now, right? Whereas if I keep my hand stable, all the thumb has to do is open right back up and it's ready to get find that B again. Look at how little movement is required to do that. Whereas ah, a lot more effort if, if we start moving down. Also, finding a group of downward notes can be a great spot to practice finding all of them at once. Because what, what can happen, right, is we find one finger after another. And this is a case, and I, I know I've talked about this many times, where it can feel easier in the moment. I don't want to have to find all these notes. I, I found these, and then I'll deal with the rest of these. But if we can learn to find all four of these, right? It's just this one movement, this one shape. That's so easy. It's just one thing we have to do rather than, oh, and another note, and another note. It's boom, we've got everything. And Another spot in the other direction is, and again, if you're using my fingerings here, is in the getting from the sixth to the seventh bar. We're going right back to the notes we just played and trying to put all the fingers on, find all that rather than, and, and not go down. So if we can just replace, So just being aware of spots like that where we're keeping a, a stable hand and trying to place as many notes as possible in a grouping can really help us in terms of speed. And the final thing I want to talk about just is, is the left hand, that in this I think what can be fun is to focus on the right hand to try and get this going. Nice and fast. And as I mentioned, even if you just do, say an E octave at the beginning of each bar, or maybe not always an E octave, but just one octave at the beginning of each bar, maybe we'd kind of do some descending. Maybe, maybe we want more of a, a G chord, for example, on the second line that's got marked E minor, but we might be doing... Mm. Anyway, just, just even if all we're doing is doing the downbeat of each bar, it can, it can zip along quite nicely, right? These chord changes could be nice, right? It, again, we could just do octaves. Do we want to do a G here? Maybe, it's a lot of extra work. We could do that E again. We could keep that E pattern going. Lots of, lots of opportunities. And again, the, the 
more secure the right hand is, the more we can mess around with creating a left hand. Or maybe that left hand is just kind of creating a, a rhythm, it's being the rhythm section, and we're having fun with the right hand, adding some brace notes, doing some variations. Again, this traditional music, right? This is a way that somebody wrote it down and that I found from someone else who wrote it down, right? That of the tune, you'll find all sorts of different variations on this tune. But uh, fantastic tune, a lot of fun to play. So I hope that was useful and I will see you in a couple weeks. Cheers.